the Cassini-Huygens space probe is on a seven-year journey to Saturn. If all goes to plan, Huygens will be the first probe ever to land on a body in the outer solar system. For the mission to succeed, the Huygens probe must send its data from the surface of Titan back to the orbiting mothership, Cassini. Cassini will then relay the information to Earth. Before the fixed communication system can prove its worth, Cassini and Huygens have to overcome one last deadly obstacle, Saturn's rings looming on its horizon. These rings are made up of billions of pieces of rock and chunks of ice from the size of a dust grain to the size of a house. Saturn is 95 times as massive as Earth, and its enormous gravitational field captures any passing objects into its orbit to form the rings. These rings are wide, nearly 165,000 miles, but very thin, only about half a mile of beautiful but deadly rock and ice. To reach Titan, Cassini-Huygens will have to fly right through the gap between the fifth and sixth, or FNG rings, using its main antenna as a shield. One miscalculation, and the huge probe will smash into a million pieces. June 30th, 2004. Cassini prepares to enter orbit. Millions of dollars and entire professional careers are on the line. Mission Control waits for a signal that the probe is still intact and operating. Cassini rotates its giant antenna and heads toward the gap. Mission Control waits nervously for the signal that the six-ton, $3 billion spacecraft has survived. 19 minutes later, a signal comes through. Johnson just reported a signal. We've survived the ring plane crossing through the F and G ring. The probe has survived, though not completely unscathed. The Cassini spacecraft was hit about 500,000 times as it went through the ring plane at that point. Fortunately, all of the hits were of tiny particles the size of smoke particles. Despite the hits, the probe is still functioning. It's time for Cassini to release Huygens for its mission to Titan. On January 14th, 2005, Huygens enters the thick, foggy atmosphere. On board, a camera is set to take the first ever pictures of this mysterious moon. This literally was the culmination of for many of us, more than 15 years of work. It was success or failure in a matter of just a few hours. I had had nightmares for many years that this just wouldn't work and we would not get a single piece of data from Huygens. Unlike the Mars landers with their airbags, the Huygens probe has only parachutes to slow down its fall. There are three of them, and they should give the probe time to take the first pictures of Titan from below the clouds. But danger heightens as re-entry and touchdown approach. It will be four hours before Huygens can contact Cassini to confirm it is safely on the surface. Until then, the team can only hope for the best. But unexpectedly, one of the telescopes tracking Cassini picks up a signal direct from Huygens itself, just an hour after the probe has landed three hours before Cassini can relay the signal to mission control. The signal is incredibly faint, but proof that Huygens is alive and well on the surface of Titan. The strength of the signal uh, received on the Earth from Huygens was unbelievably small. I think it's something like the equivalent to putting a mobile phone on the surface of the moon. Huygens was alive and transmitting directly back from Titan, the first probe to land on a celestial body in the outer solar system. Huygens has survived the landing, 
but the real data signal is still to come. I'd been preparing for this for many years, and I think because one always knew that it might fail, we might receive no data, I'd sort of prepared some sort of emotional barrier in case it didn't work. Three hours later, and seven nail-biting minutes after Cassini was supposed to transmit, Mission Control begins receiving data back from Saturn's most extraordinary moon. Here, for about two minutes, were these thumbnail images of Titan's surface, the first that any human eye had seen of the surface of Titan, coming at you one every second. And so it was this incredible emotional experience, and people were screaming uh, as these pictures came through for about two minutes. The first pictures through are of Huygens' descent. The landscape looks similar to parts of our own planet. The camera has less resolution than a modern cell phone, yet the images are detailed enough to show a rocky landscape, but with a difference. We're pretty certain that it's the equivalent of sand or gravel. But in the case of Titan, the sand and gravel is not made of, of rocky material, stony material like it is on the Earth. The bedrock on Titan is ice. Back in space, Cassini's special infrared cameras reveal that Titan's surface has undergone geological processes similar to those on Earth, lava flows, and even volcanoes. 